Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This review, as you can see, straight down to the table, will be a quick review today for a new pod kit from Geek Vape. It's going to be called the Weenax H1. Now this one will be the gunmetal version. I've been vaping this one for about a week now. I did get sent two, one in gunmetal, one in silver. I'll unbox the silver one and show you. But yeah, this is going to be the gunmetal. Put that to one side. That's how mine came there. Show you the packaging here. Like I said, they did send me two, so I'm going to show you this one. On the front of the box, it's going to be a plain white box. It does say Geek Vape. On this side, Geek Vape again. And again here is going to be Geek Vape. On the back, some details. This will be a sample. I'm going to get a little pointer. So a few bullet points. It's going to be the Weenax H1, obviously. It contains two pods. These pods are going to be refillable. It's got a built-in coil. Can't change the coil, but they are refillable. The two pods will be a 0.7 ohm. That will be fired between 16 and 19 watts. The other pod will be a 1.4 ohm, fired between 8 and 10 watts. It has three level output adjustments, so you've got low, medium and high settings, or activation or fire button, accidental protection, 5 clicks on, 5 clicks off, stable output, built-in battery will be 1000 milliamp hour, light and portable, a bottom shot proof design, which I'll show you, side fill system for the pod obviously, and 2.5 mil capacity. My one is a sample, not a TPD version. TPD version will probably be 2 mils. This one's going to be 2.5 mils. USB-C charge point, obviously. The details and a few warnings here. So inside a package in here, it's going to be plain and simple. On the top, I'm going to get the device. Like I said, this will be the silver one. Two pods. Take them out in a second. Take this out. Underneath here at the bottom, there'll be a little envelope, with little cards and little instruction booklets. Inside the packaging though, there's no USB-C charge cable. Like I said, mine's going to be a sample pack. I don't know if in the final version of the USB-C charge cable. And this one is not. I'll take out these pods quickly. This one, the silver one, I'm not going to use because I'm going to send this on later onto a Patreon. Like I said, they did send me two. I got over the main features with my gunmetal. So on these pods itself, like I said, inside the packaging, there's going to be two of them. Just saying the bottom what they are. So this will be 1.4 ohm between 8 and 10 watts, 0.7 ohm between 16 and 19 watts. Two contact points there. It's going to be slightly transparent, grey sort of plastic. Top piece will be a mouthpiece. It's a nice duckbill shape, nice and comfortable. Side full part, obviously, here. A little, little silicon plug. Put your finger there, pop it open, and fill it up. Plain and simple. These coils are a mesh coil. I'm not too sure what the material is. But yeah, I've already got, like I said, the gunmetal one here. In my gunmetal one, I've got the 0.7 ohm. So that package in there will be the 1.4. I will fill up this one as you as try it as well. Like I said, the 0.7 ohm pod. Been vaping that one for about a week now. I can already tell you my opinion on that later on. So I will try this one, the 1.4. Could put that one to the side and I will show you how to fill it quickly. Like I showed you, there's a little membrane there. Just pop it open, get your juice. I'm going to use my Pinaco from Juice Cabin. That's the same juice that's inside my 0.7 ohm pod. Put it inside and just fill it up. Now with this one, the 2.5 mil one, the juices go inside the mouthpiece as well. Maybe on a TPD version, it won't do that. It'll be stopped here just at the bottom to make it two mils. Not too sure. If it's a new pod, the first time you're filling it, make sure you leave it a good five minutes to saturate the cotton. So that one I'll go put to one side, put it over there. Let's go to the device itself. So here we are with this one. Like I said, this one's with gunmetal. On the front, you've got the fire button and the on and off button. Little LED indicator. It says Weenax outside. On the back, it says Geek Vape. Airflow control with this one is fixed. You can't change it. You've got one small hole this side. One small hole this side. And on the base with a USB-C charge point. This part here is that shot proof, they said. It's like a little rubber texture on the base. If you drop it and it lands on the floor, it will bounce and make it slightly protected. I've not tried it, I've not dropped it on purpose, but yeah, it should help protect the device if you drop out your pocket or your hands. See, like I said, on these pods, you've got two contact points, but no magnets. 
On the inside here, yeah, you can't see it. There's going to be two contact points and a little air intake for your auto draw. But yeah, it doesn't go by magnets. Push the pod inside. Goes in so far. Push a bit harder. And it will click into place. When it clicks into place, you get a little indicator that it's made contact. So my one at the moment is off. So five clicks on. And there's a little green light. So yeah, I just saw this. Sorry about that. That's one of the door. I have a little green light indicating you when you attach the pod. So like I said, five clicks on, five clicks off. Turn it off again quickly. If you turn it off, you get a little flashing light show. Got three colors there. You've got a green, a white, and a blue. Back on again. It's back on again. Now this one, like I said, is going to be auto draw or button fire. If you press this fire button three times quickly, it's gone to a white light. The white light will be medium. Three more times again. Go to blue light. The blue light will be the low setting. And then three more times again. It's gone to green. So green will be high. White will be medium. Blue will be low. When you're vaping this device, that will also indicate your battery life during the use of it for the day. So this one, right now when it's on, you can either auto draw it or press the fire button. If you set the power to what you want, right now it's on green, go go to medium setting, one, two, three, medium setting, so it's on white. If I now press it five times or turn it off, and it's turned off, the fire button won't do anything. But you can still use this as auto draw, I'll show you. So yeah, if you want to turn off the power totally, find the power settings that you like, between low, medium and high. When you've got the right setting, you don't want to use a fire button at all. Just turn the device off totally, but then the auto draw will still work. You can only use a fire button when it's turned on. So yeah, it's a nice looking device, I must say. Nice and sleek, nice and compact. The material, it feels like some sort of alloy, maybe a zinc alloy or aluminium, I'm not too sure. This one will be available in a lot of colours. I'll put a picture up here of all the different colours. Like I said, they sent me the gunmetal and the silver. The silver one's got a slight sort of pattern on it, this one. But you can see it says Weenax there. And again, Geek Vape there. But a slight pattern on this silver one. This one, like I said, I'm going to send off to a Patreon later on. Keep, going to keep using this one, because gunmetal I do like. So yeah, that's going to be the Weenax H1 from Geek Vape. Let's go up top. I've quit vape. I've quit talking about this one. So yeah, that's just going to be a quick look at the new Weenax. H1 from Geek Vape. Now the Weenax brand itself, they've got several products out there with a the Weenax label. This one, the Weenax H1, is the latest one, obviously. I've never tried any of them in the past before. It's my first time ever trying them. This one here will be that 1.4 ohm pod. Been vaping it for about two hours just to try it out. I've got mine on the green light, which will be the highest setting. Gonna use a fire button. Have a quick vape. And that's really nice. If I fire it, just auto draw, no button. Again, really nice. That auto draw is working really well with this one, the 1.4 pod and the 0.7 on pod automatically responds straight away and fires up. Some devices have a slight delay. This one, the WeNets H1, instantly fires up straight away. I personally prefer to use a fire button. It is nice there's going to be two options, either fire button or auto draw. But for me personally, fire button is best. That suits my style of vaping. I will say this one, the 1.4 pod, it's going to be a slightly loose mouth to lung, not tight mouth to lung. The 0.7 ohm is again a loose mouth to lung, much more looser than a 1.4. But neither of these pods are going to be really for direct to lung, in my opinion. They're both going to be mouth to lung to really, really loose mouth to lung. There are two holes on the sides, one that side and one that side. You could, theoretically, if you're going to say auto draw it, hold your thumb over one of them. That will give you a nice tight mouth to lung or put a bit of tape over it if you wanted to. But I personally, these two holes are going to be fine for me. I don't need to block one off. It's going to be a nice draw because I like a slightly loose mouth to lung. But both of these pods, I've been enjoying it with the airflow that's provided. Like I showed you, 
And this could be a really simple device. This could be 1,000 million hour battery built into it. Got three power settings. Like I showed you, press it three times to go from green to white to blue. The highest power we'll give out will be 19 watts. That will be with the 0.7 amp pod at full power. So it goes from 7 watts to 19 watts, and that's going to be it. But the battery life, like I said, 1,000 milliamp hour battery, I could get through a day quite easy with this one on a medium setting. I've not tried it all day with this one, the 1.4 on pod. The 1.4 on pod is less wattage, obviously. I think the highest wattage was 10 watts. So this one will get you through a day quite easy with a 1.4 on coil. Then one more vape. So it's going to be a simple device. It's going to be no sort of screen in this one. You don't really need to with those three power settings. There's enough there to find what's good for you. Like I showed you, if you want to use this as pure auto draw, use the fire button to adjust the power settings from low, medium, high. When you find one that you like, turn it off totally with fire clicks and you can still auto draw. So turn it off, no firing, but I will auto draw. So that's a good feature. You're going to use a fire button, have it turn on all the time. You're going to use this auto draw, set the power settings, and then just turn it off and vape away. Really good. Like I showed you on the base there, it's going to be a slight rubberized texture. So you drop it, it will actually bounce slightly. That's a nice feature, I must say. A lot of these sort of devices, they're quite easy to drop out of your pocket or out of your hand. So that's going to be a real good feature. So yeah, with the Wii Nights H1, it's got a lot of good features. Like I said, battery life is going to be really good. The airflow with those two small holes is enough for me. I've not found a need to sort of try and block it off with either of these pods. Like I said, three power settings, low, medium, high, auto draw or fire the button. The only slight bad point will be a personal thing. It's not gonna be a major bad point, will be the pods themselves. Yes, you can refill them, but you can't change the coil. That's not gonna be a real bad point. It's just gonna be one of those things. You can use these pods for maybe seven, eight times, refilling them. You got a foot hold pod away and change it. But yeah, I've been really enjoying this one. I've been enjoying the 0.7 on for about a week. This one, been trying it for a few hours, like I said. Not button, sorry. Go turn back on now. Because I like to fire the button personally. Really, really nice. Flavour wise for these ones, for the 0.7 ohm coil, I've been raping it for about a week. That one I will give easy at 8 to 8.5 for pod style coil. This one, the 1.4, is going to be about a 7.5 to 8 at the moment. That's going to be slightly unfair. A lot of these pods, they take a good few hours to break in. This one, like I said, I've only filled it once so far. It may improve later on, because my 0.7 ohm pod, the first time I filled it, was pretty decent flavour. The second and third time, it started to improve. So yeah, for that one, a good 8 to 8.5, but a 1.4, a 7.5 to 8, but I might change later on. So yeah, a nice, simple, easy device. This one's going to be designed for people who want a device that you just fill, install, and go. If you vape a lot of the, the um, disposables, this will be a good next step for you. Don't need to change the coils, just fill the pot itself. Put it in the device and vape away. Really nice, nice small form factor as well, I must say. But yeah, like I said, Geek Vape sent me this one and the silver one. Big thanks to them for that. Guys and girls, hope that video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you're new to me, not seen me before, my name is Kieran. This is, of course, another vape channel. Now, normally, in this part of the video, I'll say goodbye. See you all next time. But I'm going to try something slightly different here. I'd like you to leave a little comment down below. If you like this idea, at the end of every review going forward, I'm going to try to do a quick clip of the next review I'm going to be doing. So my next review will be for the Artemis 2 RDTA. Quick clip, and I will see you for that next time.